Welcome or welcome back to Barrio Tales. Today's video will be about how someone got killed by gang members, but not in a typical fashion. At the time of this crime, two gangs were at war with each other, the Hawaiian Gardens Gang and the Artesia 13 Gang. The body of 17-year-old Guillermo Carvajal was found near a trash dumpster in Los Alamitos. He had been strangled to death. A ligature mark circled his neck and the capillaries in his eyes had ruptured. He had a bruise on his forehead and duct tape residue on his arms. His hand showed no defensive wounds. Toxicology tests indicated he had a lethal amount of heroin in his blood. His body was wrapped in a hair-covered blanket. When his friends and family last saw him, Guillermo was going to Hawaiian Gardens gang member and drug dealer Richard Ramirez's house. Guillermo was going to Ramirez's house to pay off a relative's debt. Guillermo lived in Artesia, but was not an Artesia gang member. According to an eyewitness, Guillermo was waiting in Ramirez's garage with Stanley Cruz and Javin Cervantes, as well as Edward Ramirez. The three men began asking Guillermo where he was from and asked to see any gang tattoos. One of them accused Guillermo of being from Artesia. Guillermo turned to leave, but Cruz and Cervantes blocked him. Cervantes ran into the house to get Ramirez. Ramirez told Guillermo, you have been coming over here for like six months and you are from Artesia, then punched him. The men forced Guillermo to get some rope or tape. The men then took Guillermo out of the eyewitness's view. After a few minutes, the eyewitness heard one of them say, it looks like he's dead, Holmes. Cervantes then helped dispose of the body and later attempted to clean the scene of the crime to destroy any evidence. One of them asked for a blanket to wrap around the body. Ramirez approached the eyewitness, gave him some drugs, and warned him, don't trip. Ramirez explained that they had been taking care of this fool from Artesia because we're at war with these fools. The eyewitness left, used the drugs, and returned to Ramirez's house. Someone was guarding the garage. The eyewitness's cousin was waiting to buy drugs. Ramirez told the cousin he needed a favor. The eyewitness and the cousin left and split up, but the eyewitness returned a short time later. He saw a yellow truck backing up Ramirez's driveway towards the garage. The truck then pulled out of Ramirez's driveway with the eyewitness's cousin driving. Ramirez was in the passenger seat and a bulky body-shaped object was in the truck's bed. Later investigation revealed the truck's registered owner lived on the same street as Cervantes. The eyewitness left Ramirez's house with Cervantes and another man and later heard Cervantes tell someone that they were dumping a body in Los Alamitos. The body was near a trash bin in the 3300 block of Cerritos Avenue. Employees of a disposal company found Guillermo's body on May 29, 2001. The next day, the eyewitness saw Cervantes in Ramirez's garage, which smelled of bleach. Cervantes was drenched in sweat, shirt off, running around like a maniac, sweeping piles of hair. He was sweeping up hair like he was on a mission. Subsequent forensic investigation tied Guillermo's death to Ramirez. Dog hair from the blanket wrapped around Guillermo came from Ramirez's dog. DNA from chewing gum found on Guillermo's leg matched Ramirez's daughter. Also, shoe prints on the duct tape wrapped around the blanket and on the ground near the dumpster came from the type of sneakers that Ramirez owned. Stanley Cruz was later arrested, read his Miranda rights, and questioned. He conceded being in Ramirez's garage with Guillermo on the day of the murder. He stated he slapped Guillermo because Guillermo evacuated about being from Artesia. He denied any knowledge of the murder. Even if he did know something, he would rather take the fall than rat on anyone. The way Guillermo died as he was hogtied was from getting injected with a lethal dose of heroin. Guillermo Carvajal was not from the rival Artesia gang, but because a relative of his owed a debt to the Hawaiian Gardens gang, and because Guillermo resided in the city of Artesia, it cost him his life. Edward Ramirez was charged along with Cervantes, Cruz, and Richard Ramirez, but it's unclear what his involvement was or if Edward Ramirez was ever convicted of anything, as he's currently not in prison. However, Hawaiian Gardens gang members Javin Cervantes was convicted of aided and abetted in a first-degree murder for the benefit of a gang. The jury found true the special circumstance that he intentionally did it as an active participant in a criminal street gang. He was sentenced to state prison for life without the possibility of parole. Stanley Cruz was convicted of first-degree murder. Stanley Cruz was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Richard Ramirez was convicted of first-degree murder. He was sentenced to life in prison without parole.